on to Donnie. Donnie, what explainative power does that comment have? And Mr. Zeitgeist, why do you feel the need to call me that? Drop the emotional rhetoric because spamming the thread with videos that were made specifically to make an assertion instead of providing evidence doesn't meet your burden of proof. And Mark, really? And what got you to that conclusion? Can you do some um can you do something different and actually lay out the causal chain of what got you to that conclusion so we can all follow the same logic, please? Now this this is one thing this is one uh one thing that I think is quite effective and just cutting through all the bullshit. Because the thing is, I've been reading this for God knows how long. And, um, you know, and it's taking so much time. Um, and these these sort of questions, you just need to hold their feet to the fire, as it were, and say something along the lines of, what got you to that conclusion? How do you know? And can you do something different and actually you know, lay out the causal chain of what got you to that conclusion so we can all do that for ourselves. Lay out the causal chain. You know, just pin them to that and if they still can't, you know, if they still try and wriggle out of it, just say, okay, fair enough, done. You know, this is what I should have done, but, you know. Uh, da, 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 da. And then I said, uh, oh, and do it without putting equal symbols in between nouns. Because that's one thing I... That, that anti-NWO people tend to do as well. It's like zeitgeist equals NWO. And like NWO equals depopulation. Um, Obama equals um, Zionist or something, you know. <laughs> they, they just put equals symbols in, in, in between nouns. It's quite ridiculous. Anyway, Mark Hirschberger says, uh, There is nothing natural about finding ways to extend our lives or change anything from how our prehistoric ancestors survived in cave dwellings. Hmm. So, are you saying, Mark Hirschberger, that com communicating to someone who probably lives on the other side of the planet via a computer, that is a change in how, in, quote-unquote, how our prehistoric ancestors survived in cave dwellings? So you're admitting that you're even living an unnatural life. <laughs> See, this is the ridiculous nature of what people people try to argue with on the internet about these kind of things. But anyway, Donny Freeman says, uh, Well, seen as though it's in your name, Mr. Zeitgeist, you need to step back and start looking at everything, even things that may go against the grain. You're a perfect example of ignorance, Adam Zeitgeist Antium. I respond to Mark. I say, uh, Mark, TZM isn't about extending life per se. I suppose in abstraction you um, you would be if you want to help everyone achieve a higher standard of living, but that's just being a good human being and helping those in need. And haven't we already challenged, changed our lifestyle from, f lifestyle from cave dwelling? You see, cave dwelling isn't the best standard of living possible. We can live better than that. All of us, not a select few at the expense of everyone else. You literally have an inverse view of what TZM is about. Mark Hirschberger says, I was exaggerating the idea of natural to make a point about the naturalistic fallacy. What naturalistic fallacy? <laughs> you see, it's just things just come completely out of left field. Just, what? <laughs> what? Where did that come from? Um... Anyway, Donnie Froome says, lol, cave dwelling? Our ancient ancestors were a lot smarter than we are today. Hmm. Mark Hirschberger says, no, they weren't. They were, um, they were as short-sighted and solipsistic as modern humans. I respond, Donnie, the title Mr. is only followed by the surname. Zeitgeist is the middle name on my Facebook account. If you were to call me Mr. Antium, that would be accurate, even though Antium isn't my surname. You keep making these statements that I need to step back and so forth, um, but that's all you're saying. You're providing zero reason for me to do, do what you suggest, and calling me ignorant isn't prov proving your case either. Just calling someone is ignorant doesn't prove they are, but considering you think uh, that actually uh, that actually works... I would like to use the same rationale 
and call you a kestrel. Are you flapping your wings yet? <laughs> Donny Freeman says, lol, Mark Hirschberger, we aren't building pyramids today, mate, and don't build structures like that for a tomb or a view. I respond, um, oh, you were exaggerating, I see. That still doesn't address the issue. A naturalist, naturalistic fallacy? What naturalistic fallacy? Mark Hirschberger says, we don't need pyramids today. They were tombs for pharaohs or in case... Um, or in some cases, temples. Um, Donnie Freeman says, Adam, you're lost, mate. You're only can figure it... Own oh, wait a minute. Adam, you're lost. Yeah, you're as in Y-O-U-R, no apostrophe and E. Adam, you're lost, mate. Only you can figure it out. Stop relying on other people. you got enough to go on. Lol, don't be daft. Um, I respond, lost? How so? You can't, um, you can't even prove what you say, can you? As a result, you're forced to make vague negative declarations. Can you just admit that? Mark Hirschberger said, my bad, um, I should has said appeal to nature. And he gives the Wikipedia entry for the appeal to nature. An appeal to nature is an argument or rhetorical tactic in which it is proposed... Uh, um, and I respond with naturalistic fallacy is the same thing as the appeal to nature fallacy. Most logical fallacies have more than one name. For instance, the appeal to popularity fallacy is also called the bandwagon fallacy. But you still haven't demonstrated why, you, uh, why you've brought up the, the fallacy itself. Are you just willing to tell us that you're familiar with the fallacy? Well done, you know of a fallacy. Donny Freeman says, lol, who's using Wicca, Wiki for their main source? And he puts a link up from The Guardian. Wikipedia editing courses launched at Zion by Zionist groups. Um, Donny Freeman then says, pyramids were not built for the purpose of a tomb. Um, I respond, uh, so that's the bottom line now. No, um, cause I think this was like, you know, quite a time after. Uh, so that's the bottom line now. No substantial evidence to prove TZM is NWO. In fact, no recognition that TZM and Zeitgeist the movie are two separate things. Uh, and then Mark Hirschberger says, who cares as both are garbage? Um, I respond, oh, so now it doesn't matter what you're trying to prove is correct or not. I see. Mark Hirschberger says, dude, it never mattered. Neither the film nor the movement has amounted to anything. I respond, you certainly spent a hell of a lot of time on something that never mattered. Or maybe this is your way of trying to still dodge the act of admitting you haven't met your burden of proof. Tell you what, I'll make a prediction. I will ask for evidence that TZM has amounted to nothing and you won't provide any evidence. Instead, you will dodge it while making another unsubstantiated claim about it. Mark Hirschberger says, I think it's cute you still think I owe you something, especially given that you're propping up a failed movement that peaked before social media took off. Social media, by the way, are sites like MySpace and Facebook. <laughs> and for those of you who know, you know, the Zagash movement has only been around, even if it's been around for six years, right? Facebook recently celebrated its 10th birthday. And Facebook isn't the first social media site. There was MySpace before that. There were there were other... Uh, Face Party, I think there was another one before that. It was like... I think back in the 90s, social media started. But anyway. Um, and I put you... Uh, I responded, you know what I'm thinking. Ah! And just as I predicted, no evidence and another unsubstantiated claim. You're way too predictable. Mark Hirschberger says, uh, Do you know what else is predictable? Failed ideologies who are desperate to appear relevant uh, to the zeitgeist of the moment. I respond, so you admit, admit to being predictable. Cool. And let's do some calculations, shall we? TZM started back in late 2008. Facebook, arguably the most popular social, social media site, which was preceded by many others, MySpace being one of them, started in early 2004. Uh, help me out with the maths here. 
because I think you're wrong yet again. And how can something peak while not achieving anything? Mark Hirschberger says, You suck at this. You're not even funny. Your movement must be pleased that you're spending so much time arguing with strangers. I'm sure, in, I'm sure it hel- it's helping the cause. Donnie Freeman says, Mr. Zeitgeist, instead of rambling on about bullshit, why don't you actually look into what they do and don't do? I respond, if you mean I suck at getting facts through your skull, then you're probably correct. And I'm not trying to be funny. My movement? So are you saying I'm the leader of TZM now? Donnie, se- um, Donnie says the guy who uses his comments not to provide any evidence of his claims, but just to utter vacuous statements and suggestions. You're projecting. Mark Hirschberger says, I'm saying you suck at being an advocate and you suck at being entertaining. You're a bore. Uh, Donnie Freeman says, stop waffling and do your own work. Uh, I respond, are you, are either of you aware that you're having to take this hostile attitude because reason and evidence is not on your side in this matter? Why can't you meet your burden of proof? Stop telling me what to do and prove what you're claiming. You can't provide proof, um, if you can't, if you can't provide that proof, admit it and we'll go our separate ways. And what's a bore? Because he spelled it B double O R. I thought I thought he meant B O R E. You know, you're boring me. Um, Mark Hirschberger says someone who deprives you of solitude while also depriving you of company. Hmm. Um, I respond. And how do you propose that you can have solitude or company on a Facebook group? Uh, and then Mark Hirschberger says, "Man, you're thick." I respond, and how is calling me a bore and calling me thick not ad hominem fallacies? Do you have anything to contribute besides wanton and immature name calling? Mark Hirschberger says, an insult isn't an ad hom, jackass. Uh, I, I, I responded, actually it is. An ad hominem attack is where you insult them. An ad hominem fallacy is when you insult them to divert away from the topic at hand. Here, this link might help. And I send him a link to, again, to the logical fallacy is dot com page for the ad hominem. Uh, and Mark Hirschberger says, you're still a bore. Bore. Uh, plural noun bores. One, an unrefined, ill-mannered person. At last, the big obnoxious bore has, has been dealt a stunning blow for his uh, uncouth and belligerent manner. It's like a context example. Um... And then I respond with, I think this might help you as well. And I give him a Wikipedia link to the article for psychological projection. Now, that's that, that's that conversation. That's, that's how, how it can go, you know. And um, let's just spend some time uh, thinking, thinking about that. Because, you know, there, there's certain claims that they make. And, and I ask them to back them up and... They just they just spam like YouTube links and uh, and articles which already have a specific thing that they want to claim with emotional rhetoric with no appreciation or acknowledgement of the difference between uh, the goals quote unquote of a film and the goals of a social movement just because they have the same name. You know, I mean, why why isn't anyone uh, why isn't anyone like having a go at Black Sabbath because uh, one of the songs on their new newest album, Thirteen, I think it's called, is called Zeitgeist. Why isn't anyone getting on them about that? You know, it's like, oh, you're you're New World Order because you have a song called Zeitgeist on your album. No, <laughs> but anyway. Um, there's that. I just want to read one more, uh, one more thing. I, I, I know this can can seem a bit boring, but uh, but just to, I just want to give um, like a good um, context on the kind of mentality of uh, of these kind of people. This is a separate conversation. I think it's on the same group. But uh, Roddy Piper says Zeitgeist is nothing but NWO propaganda. It preaches collectivism, the destruction of the individual, and the love affair for the Venus Project scam. Then uh, Donald Ragsdale says, 100% proof that any idiot with Photoshop can put shit on the internet. 
Uh, la, 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 la. I respond with, are you being ironic, Roddy? Uh, Roddy Piper says, the Venus Project, like communism, on paper looks great until you actually enact it, and then these pesky things we call humans get involved. Uh, no thanks, I've had enough of the collective and sharing and taxation and robbery, bribery, outsourcing and sheer unproductive behaviour. I saw through the Venus Project in the first 60 seconds more corporate greed and control. Now keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. I, he says, I saw through the Venus Project in the first 60 seconds and at no point through this through this discussion did he did he admit that he had done any more than 60 seconds worth of research. Um, and then he says, I'm being literal. It's quite shite. Uh, I respond, Roddy, just like with the other people who try to avoid substantiating the claim of TZN being NWO, I'm afraid I can't just take your word for it. If you make a claim, you need to back it up with evidence, not blanket assertions. Roddy Piper says, uh, who would regulate this so-called utopia? Who would make sure that production is on par? Who makes sure that the collective get what they need? See, see, this is the thing. You know, you ask them specific questions to to get them to substantiate the claims that they're making because they're just coming out with all these claims. You say, whoa, 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 whoa! Please back these up. And then, and then, and instead of backing them up, they just say, "Well, who's going to do what in this utopia of yours?" You know, they they completely they turn the tables. It's a two core key fallacy. Um. I respond, OK, bon, um, before firing questions at me, how about you prove that what um, prove uh, what you have claimed thus far? Roddy Piper says, no thanks, it's fucking collectivism, bro. I'll pass. So this is, so this is it, right? You ask them, can you prove what you've, what you've claimed? And they say, no, I'm not going to prove what I'm saying. They actually say it. <laughs> they say, no thanks. And then they just make a note, it's collectivism, I'll pass. And it's like, I prefer to make a claim and then run away when someone asks me to back it up. Um, but anyway, I respond, wow, people in this group really do have a pro problem proving what they claim. Um, uh, da, 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 Roddy Piper then says, how hard is it to prove it's collectivism? I asked you who will regulate this so-called utopia and you just sat there blank. Either you can respond or you can go back to studying your linear charts of Karl Marx. Hmm. So basically what he's just done there is the, uh, is the uh, burden of proof fallacy. He's basically just made these claims and said, right, you prove me wrong. And you haven't, you haven't provided any evidence to prove me wrong, so you must be full of shit. You know, that's the kind of things that you know people do. Uh, I respond, Roddy, are you aware that you've just made a series of claims? Then asked me to prove. Um, asked. Uh, then when asked to prove them, you dodged it. Then start started asking me loaded questions. And because I'm sticking with holding uh, you to meet your burden of proof, that somehow substantiates your claims. And uh, oh, bloody hell. Oh yeah, I didn't copy all the rest of the uh, comment there. But uh, he says, uh, Roddy Piper says, Okay, fine. I'll give you five minutes of my time. That is why I believe, uh, this is why I believe the Venus Project is nothing more than an audio book from Karl Marx, minus the conspiracy parts, which uh, I believe many. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so... Here, here's the thing. This, this is why you can, uh, why most anti-NWO people are slightly different, because some people will say it's composed completely of conspiracy theories, and other people will will say that it's basically Marxist propaganda minus the conspiracy parts. Um, but yeah, it gives a link to why I don't advocate the Venus Project and the resource-based economy. La da da da. da. Uh, and da, 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 da. Roddy Piper then says on paper it makes perfect sense however when met with logistics resources and governance it to me equals the same exact problem we face now 
So basically, he's saying that you know this is this is his opinion. It's, to me, it's doing this, but he's also making truth claims at the same time. Um, Roddy Piper then says, uh, "The more I learn about uh, BRE, yeah, he actually says BRE, not RBE or RBEM or NLRBM." Uh, the more I lean towards the conclusion that BRE is just household economics applied to a larger scale. In a sense, he's right, because, you know, the, the, the term economy is means household management. But to a larger scale, the planet, to take care of everything. R B oh, he suddenly says RBE followers are children who lack the security of a family. It's a sad concentration, and I feel sorry for them. Okay. Um, some guy called Christopher Kendra says, Roddy, how does everything you hate become communism? And this, I think, is a this is an interesting point, because uh, even people who are on this group still, uh, still recognise uh, certain things. So it's not completely all, um, like, all... Like nasty trolls, um, and then uh, then he adds, "Do you understand that communism is an economic policy?" Roddy Piper says, "Because it's lit, um, because it literally is a repetition of Marxist utopia. People claim free market capitalism, but don't even know what it is, uh, nor have we ever had it. It's humorous, really. See, here's the here's the thing. You know, people." Um, People who are free market capitalists or of that kind of school of thought, they say that, um, that the wonderful things we have is because of capitalism. But then when you, uh, when you point out something negative about capitalism, they say, oh no, capitalism has never existed. We've never had, capit no, we've never had true capitalism, even though capitalism is supposedly responsible for all the wonderful things we have. And he says here, learn. Roddy Piper says here, learn something, and he links uh, the uh, the debate between Pierre Joseph and Stefan Molyneux that was on the twenty third of twenty um, third of something. I can't. It doesn't say on the link. Twenty third, twenty thirteen. I I respond, Roddy. Uh, what you've provided is nothing more than another person's opinion that already has a vested interest in having an unshakable belief in associating TZM with communism, not to mention conflating the first film with the movement. This is nothing more than confirmation bias. Considering that communism is an extremely subjective term, which may even in this group, uh, which many even in this group, sorry, would disagree on the definition of, I think the first thing you need to do is strip down what you define as communism, Put it in a numbered list and compare it to what TZM actually advocates. I would recommend using TZM's orientation, the Zeitgeist Movement Defined, which can be found here. And I give him a link to the orientation on the zeitgeistmovement.com. And I said, uh, can you also explain what a BRE is? Uh, and then uh, da, 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 Christopher Kendra says, Roddy, perhaps you should read a book and spend less time on the internet. I've read some of your other musings on other posts, and you kind of come off like a conspiracy nut and a Republican. Those two things that seem to be converging a lot more these days. And that is that. That's all That's all I'm going to read, because I've bored you guys for way too long on that sort of thing. So what, what conclusions can we draw from this? You know, what... Um, what sort of things does uh, does this kind of thinking say? And I'd say it's uh, it you know it is a form of pseudo intellectualism uh, because they purport to be you know truth seekers or um, truth holders, but they uh, but they never seem to uh, be able to substantiate anything they say. That um, it it is it is a, a sort of religious cult like mentality. Um, but the, uh, but the thing is the, um, but on, on, you know, only in the sense that, uh, that they feel inclined to just keep making assertions and not back anything up and use logical fallacies to try and, you know, duck and dive and weave through the, uh, the questions they're being asked by people. And, uh, but 
let's do, you know, I just want to touch on the ultimate, uh, the ultimate end result of holding these, these kind of ideals that, you know, there's a new world order and, and, uh, you know, we we need to uh, we need to accept the fact that there is a new world order. What do you what do you think that w- the the realization that there's a new world order? What do you think it will do to a person's motivation? You know, even even the the uh, this even the supposition that there's this unchangeable, uh, unchallengeable reptilian elite that has plans for global domination and uh, they they're spying on everything you do and uh, they they tax you up to the hill and they want to kill a vast majority of the population you know what what do you think that would do to someone's motivation to make the world a better place do you think cuz cuz really you know there's there's no real end game solution I don't want to use the word end game because that's that's also a charged word in the anti NWO circles. But what do you think uh, is the ultimate solution that they propose? I mean, there's a lot of uh, anarcho capitalists and anarcho communists in the um, in the uh, the truth movement, as it were, in the anti anti NWO crowd. But they uh, but they don't really seem to present. Any kind of um, any kind of solutions. It's just all about you know debunking things and un- leaking things and exposing things and challenging things and confronting things. It's a it's a very uh, it's a very combative uh, mentality that sees people who are you know understandably very angry about the world in, about the world in which they live, the, the suffering that they're that is imposed on them and their fellow human beings, and they they want to look around and uh, and point fingers at people and and what a be- what better a, a uh, direction to point the finger of blame at those who are in charge, those who are responsible for the uh, for the kind of state of suffering that we're that we're in at the moment, and that's and that's quite um, that's quite disappointing. That people feel the need to have to point fingers at people and say, "Oh, it's your fault that uh, that things are like this." You know, you're you know you're part of the new world order. You want to bring down the world, and we have to stop you. But we never really give any concrete details on how we propose to stop you, besides going to rallies and shouting through megaphones and giving giving out DVDs and making films and hosting radio shows and pop. You know, posting blogs and making YouTube videos. And is that really going to make the world a better place? You know, I mean, one of the things that I've that I've said before in the past it was one of the things that uh, that I gave as an answer during my the Q and A of my first Z Day presentation, and uh, and that's that uh, even if everything they say about the new world order is true, what it, let, let's just say for the for the sake of argument that everything about the new world order is supposedly true. What difference does that make for what we need to do to make the world a better place? And also, don't you think that the idea that there's this new world order is maybe part of uh, of some some mentality of ensuring? That the world won't become a better place. If you if you're convinced that we're all doomed, do you really think that will motivate you to improve things in the world? I would say not. You know, I would say that that would demotivate most people, and, th- and that's the thing. You know, the the truth movement and the anti anti NWO crowd they they say, oh yeah, we we got to just get this information out there. But even if it was completely shown to be true that, you know, the, uh, like, so for example, the Bush administration was responsible for 9 11, and, uh, you know, and if we brought them to justice, and what would that really change? The only thing it would really change is that the establishment would think, shit, we've got, we've got to be really careful now. We can't leave anything to chance. We've got to stop being complacent. 
and they'll just carry on with their with their nefarious schemes being more insidious than ever before. It will drive them underground. Not that they are already underground with the vast majority of the, the you know, the things they do. Like with the backroom deals and everything, like with Bilderberg, for ex- for example. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, that you know that was uh, some kind of um, some kind of plotting, but it does it does concern it does it should concern anyone when the people who are in charge of in quote unquote in charge of the company and you know at the tops of some of the most profitable industries on the planet when they get when they meet behind closed doors, you know, and they and they don't release what they're talking about, that's that's a point of concern, you know. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're plotting for world domination or anything like that. They they probably are in a monetary sense, but that would end with the monetary system, and the monetary system is collapsing. There's nothing they can do about that, really. It's a it's a mathematical reality that infinite growth on a finite planet won't sustain itself so one way or another the monetary system's coming to an end by its own inherent logic or we can help uh you know dismantle it by moving away from the need for it you know um but that you know that that's the that's the ultimate point i want to make really is that the 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 association the anti nwo crowd have with uh the zeitgeist movement for instance, is that it's somehow like New World Order propaganda, and you know because they say, oh, it calls for it calls for the ends of nations and stuff like that. Why? How do you make that stretch? I mean, when we say we all need to unify as a species and work together and respect each other, how is that? Yeah. The, the, it's it's almost like there's this association fallacy, because uh, for some reason, the ideas of global domination have come with a pretext of global unity, and uh, you know dissolving barriers. Even though that you know, and that's the and that's the convenient thing that these people cling on to. They think, oh yeah, um, you know, Stalin said that, or Mao or Pol Pot said that. And uh, you know, and look how many pe- how many millions and billions of people they killed. <laughs> but you know, it's it's just complete um, utter lunacy. And that, you know, and that's why that's why I went through the the effort of you know engaging with those people to begin with, and also reading these uh, these out to you because these are the kind of people. That you will be up against if you uh, if you challenge the anti NWO crowd. I'm I'm not saying it shouldn't be done. It should be, and uh, and it should be um, the information should be spread to uh, to show how uh, how ridiculous uh, the ideas that they uh, that they purport are. Because for one thing, they they don't substantiate anything that they're saying, and uh, there's just no. There's no real, um, there's no real communication with them because it's just, you know, they, whenever you try to engage them, they just turn things on you and start spouting things more, you know, and this is a, this is a sad, um, sad situation because, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame that people still, still communicate in this manner, you know. But, uh, but anyway, there's there's that. Um, I didn't want to make this uh, this podcast that long. However, one thing I should mention before we go is just to give another shout out to our sponsors, Stupid Man Suit, the uh, software update system and service for uh, your human imitating needs. Because you know, us shape shifting reptilians who are planning for world domination, you know. Unfortunately, we have bland obsolescence built into us as well. So we need those regular updates every two weeks. Just, you know, replenish yourself, you know, and both, you know, physically and humanly, as it were. But anyway, go to www.stupidmansuit.com for more details. Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, I hope you took something uh, from this uh, conversation, but... uh, (laughs) Other than that, 
Take care, guys. I'll speak to you next time.